Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, in my last video, I introduced the Autocaster feeder, um, which uh, powered by battery, and it also contains uh, the proximity sensor, which look at the nozzle tip pickup uh, actions and then advance the tape um, automatically. So in the good thing about that is you don't need to have any wire that you can um, just um, depend on the feeder itself to react. So um, this works great, um, but then I also got some feedback um, uh, or suggestions. And since since uh, we have a control over the um, base plate, I got a question: Why not just provide the power through the base plate? Then I think it's a, it's a very good idea. So and I look into it, and then um, I found since we want to provide already the power through the base plate, why not just also provide? The position information so that user can just plug in the components and then it automatically knows what component it is in which position it need to pick up. Um, therefore, I come up with this uh, solution. So uh, as you can see, uh, I will first introduce this uh, solution and then I will make a demo. Um, so yeah, uh, as you can see here, we have a, a feeder or component. This is the control board, a feeder feeder board or component board. And then I have this uh, strip board, which is used to um, make contact to the components. And then the strip board will need to communicate to the control board here. And then the control board basically um, use the um, uh, USB to serial communication. And then you can communicate to PC. For example, the open PMP will come through here, send the G-code. And then the control board will then send those um, uh, commands to the feeder and feeder will react. So this is basically how it works. And for the boards, you can see um, this is the component boards. I just need to make the focus. Okay. So this is the uh, component boards. It has uh, the ARM M0 MCU. And it also comes with some peripherals. Uh, for example, this one is the um, DC motor driver chip. And then this is a, a capacitor uh, just for the motor driving. And then um, in here, we also have the proximity sensor, uh, which is controlled by I2C um, uh, protocol. And then here also uh, have a LED. So in this board, um, basically you have uh, some preferences. And then also I have um, um, pin out the IO, GPIOs here and here. And also you, got, you can have a SWD interface uh, in here. So this is a, very handy for development purpose. So I use it as a dev development board. And then um, I actually, this time I actually asked um, a PCB way to uh, make this board for me. Uh, actually the PCB way sponsored this board and I actually uh, asked them to source the, the all the component for me and also assemble, assemble for me. Uh, so when I get the, um, this board back, uh, when I look at the, the build quality, I think it's uh, pretty good. And I actually uh, plug it into the, the system and it, then it works um, right away. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, yeah, you can, you can find the, the link for PCB way to uh, make the PCB um, in the comment section. And this is the, basically the, um, the component board. You can use it for actually different components, for example, um, Fiducia as well, and uh, maybe other like camera later, you can also use it to control. Um, yeah, I will lay, I'll put this one um, in my website. So if you are interested, you can get it from there. And then here is the, the strip board. You can see this is a long strip and Basically, it's um, you can see it's actually serial together, and then you connect to the control uh, control board through a connector. And the good thing about this one is that it's actually uh, flexible. So if you want to have a, um, a bigger plate, then you just put more boards in here and serialize them, and then later uh, put the control board connect the control board at the end. Then it's possible, and also. Uh, because it's a Lego size, so it's uh, possible to just uh, uh, take out, you can see, it's uh, possible to take out the, the PCB and then you can also put it in. Um, it's, a, it's a quite straightforward and easy to put in. 
and it, it's also like fixed in position, so you don't have to have any glue, uh, glue or something else to um, to fix it. And then um, you can see there are space. Currently, there are space in between. Um, actually, I designed it, this one to work both with, um, uh, for example, space in between. You can evenly space them, or you can uh, put it side by side. And currently, I don't put in side by sides because um, the connector here are they are too close. So I have already made another version which optimize uh, this problem. So later. Um, they will be just, uh, uh, they can put side by side and then with the connector they serialize uh, together. So in, in this way it's very um, flexible, easy to extend. Um, yeah, this is basically uh, for the, um, the strip board. And then here we have the control board. Um, okay, so let me just focus it. Okay. So you can see this one is the control board. Its uh, its main main purpose is to communicate to the PC and also talk to the uh, strip board. Um, this one comes with the USB to uh, serial chip that you can uh, you can use to uh, communicate to PC, or you can use it to also get the debugging information or whatever. And then here you got two push buttons. One is reset, the other is the normal button, and then. Um, I also pin out the, the GPIOs or other SWD interface so that you can uh, debug or um, yeah, do whatever uh, other purpose. And then I also make, I also market the, what is the, the IOs that it's um, been uh, exposed. And here also there is a connector just specifically for the um, control for the strip board um, connections. So this is the control board. So, okay. So with this solution, um, right now I'm gonna make a demo. So um, I need to first start the Open PMP. So you can see here there is an um, uh, Open PMP. Um, so basically, this one I implemented in Open PMP a uh, Casa feeder. And this Casa feeder, actually, um, if you look at it, it's really um, similar to push-pull feeder. Um, that's because I'm, I really like the um, push-pull feeder from OpenPMP. And what it, uh, it has, it supports the 2mm and 4mm pitch. And it also um, uh, has the a feature that if you specify the hole, it will come and align the hole. Uh, positions, even if you don't specify really accurately, it will be able to correct by itself to um, then pick uh, very accurately. So this is a really great feature. So therefore I um, use that, I inherit from the uh, push-pull feeder and then I make uh, adaptation. So in here you can see there is a feeder setup. So basically you can um, discover the feeder here. So um, later, you, later I will implement more features in here, but for now we can just say um, discover. But then um, you see right now there is nothing because I didn't put in anything here, any, any components in a, in a plate. So right now uh, if I then put in the uh, components, oh, just put in this way. So now you can see I put in the component and imagine this is a feeder so it should be able to get the um, position. So if I run the detect, you see it actually um, identified the, the feeder already. And then what's even interesting is that if you look at the pick location, um, you see it's already been set. But um, for this pick location, right now it uh, only uh, shows the center of the contact point. Uh, of course, it also has the capability of uh, adding the offset here, but I don't uh, adding the offset to the pick location, but I didn't put in that yet. Um, I didn't enable it yet because uh, I just want to show you in uh, it's easier to understand when um, just using the the center of this um, um, connection connect contact point. So you can see here is x is sixty four. So basically, in this is the x direction and. For each, uh, for the, the distance between the two Lego dots is eight millimeters. 
both horizontal and vertical in X or Y. So here, 50, uh, here 64, that means it's uh, 8. It's a number 8 column. And then, um, so we can we can actually count, but I start from 0, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's actually indeed uh, the 8th column. And then in the Y, it says it's 80. So that means uh, from this direction, then it should be um, 80 is 8 multiply 10. So it should be 10. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10. So which which is is good. So that means it could actually um, get the location of the the board. But you might you might ask what happened if um, I move the feeder. So right now I would say I move the feeder uh, one grid. There was eight millimeter uh, to the to the left. So I can do this. And then what I can do is I can go here and discover feeder. And then you will see it's becoming fifty six. And before it was uh, 64, so therefore it actually um, identify the positions. And then while the y-axis is the same because we only move uh, to the to the x direction to the left uh, one grid, but we can also do move um, to the y direction just a millimeter less, for example, here. And then we say discover, and then you see this becoming 72. So it actually move a millimeters. So it, with this feature, so we would be we should be able to um, like place plug in the place that we want, and then we do the discover, and then you will see it actually change to the corresponding positions. So this this works great, but also um, one thing is that uh, what about um, let's say. Uh, the other components, let's say you have a component and you don't want to place in the, this direction What if you want to place on other direction, what happens? So we can just plug it in and then we can say discover feeder as well and you can see the position actually changed from 32 to 56 right now so it actually identified the position of um, the other orientation so basically, I designed this uh, uh, system to be uh, orientation agnostic. So you can actually uh, turn like 90 degree, for example, but you, you can also like turn, for example, uh, 180 degree, and you can still do the discover, and then you will see it actually identifies the um, position, basically. So this makes it uh, really handy um, if you have like different components uh, you want to um, you need to put them in different orientations yeah so this is uh, basically the the system and then what happens you might wonder what happens if we um, like into a new machine and then we can say okay in the in the new machine we maybe delete this one we just have create a new cassette feeder uh, for example I also delete this one and then we say I created a CASA feeder here. Then you see this is a new CASA feeder and then we just go here and we say discover feeder. Then it will automatically discover that. And if you notice that uh, the other one which is not uh, used, it's been marked as not enabled. So only the, the feeder has been detected marked as uh, yeah, enabled. So yeah, this is basically um, what I have um, achieved so far. Um, uh, there is also one thing like, um, um, in order to, uh, I'm currently traveling in, in China, so um, I don't have the, the feeder uh, printed, so this is only the small parts I have. Um, but then when, I'm, when I go back, I will then uh, print out the full um, feeders, and then I'll assemble this one, and then um, just make the, the feeder, and then I plug in, and then, I will make the, um, um, the open PMP come here and then pick up the, the correct um, location. And also, also um, there is one thing I need to mention. So each uh, feeder, this one has a unique um, ID. So basically, it, if you change location, it will know that this is, the, um, this is exactly this feeder has been moved 
to the different locations. So it doesn't really create another one. It's just um, it knows it's this one already been created. So it update the position only. So this is also um, a handy. So if you have an, another feeder and later if you move this one to another position and the other feeder to this position, it will know that in this position is another feeder and then it will it can track where the feeder moves. So yeah, this is a basically um, um, what it supports. And then also we can put in the fiducia, for example, here, and then we can have the camera look at that and then we can know the um, offset for this play um, to the basically to the rear machine coordinates, so we can actually um, uh, adjust to the to the machine calibrate to the machine coordinates, so it will work together. So yeah, this is um, um, what I have so far. So um, thanks for for watching, and I want to um, um, say thanks to uh, PCB Way to sponsor for the boards. And I also want to thank uh, Nikki Smith, uh, which uh, we have a lot of uh, valuable discussions and a lot of great ideas. And also we work together really um, a lot. So yeah, thank you very much. And I hope you have a nice day. So see you next video.